hello and welcome uh, everyone to the last semi final we already have three finalists with us uh, kanan gill bisakal anrath and nihal parashar uh, by the time this quarter final uh, this semi final ends uh, we will have the final finalist of quizzing with the comedians third edition on that note let me start welcoming uh, uh, all the all the participants the first participant is uh, <laughs> i don't want to do and jinx this because i do that and uh, this guy says that uh, maine bahut pressure create kar diya in pe so uh, uh, let's just call him because <laughs> we know his background so far in quizzing with the comedians give it up for rohan joshi okay. hello again here we are oh my god stress and stress it's been such a good day of quizzing kv every right? game has been a banger yeah right right thank you thank you rohan <laughs> on that note another very 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 strong uh, uh contestant uh just like uh, some of us uh, of course me she has been a quizzer since her school days and that is what i love about her her dedication to quizzing uh give it up for shreemai das Woo! Uh, no pressure at all <laughs> you were like i won't put pressure on rohan so let me put pressure on shreemai yes, instead <laughs> all you all you yeah. so you now it almost feels like a college fest now there's a blue team and there's a red team red. <laughs> <laughs> plain blue t-shirt and red t-shirt Okay. Uh, on that note, uh, someone who made her debut in quizzing, like she was part of movies edition, but in the general edition she made her debut and she qualified from a quarter final. Uh, in the quarter final that had Biswa Sumaira, no, Biswa Sumukhi, Sonali, and who was the fourth one? Sumit Sora. Ah, uh, Sumit Sora. <laughs> Thank you, Sonali. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Oh, it was R S F S. Yes. That's the that quarter final. Yeah, something like that. No, B K B S. We might probably we might probably knows the scores of that game right now off yeah. the top of our head if you ask her. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so on the back of some great answers like uh, Back to the Future and uh, Bombay Duck, uh, give it up for Sonali Thakkar. Hello. What is up? Up. Uh, Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Sonali. Hi, Sonali. Hi. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Our next content. Our next uh, participant is uh, is someone who so- somehow played a role in Nihal Parashar's win uh, and entering uh, final because uh, because of his schedule we had to swap him and Nihal. So Nihal was supposed to be here, but he quali- he played the semi final too and he won that semi final and now he's a finalist. Uh, so in that sense, contributing to other people's win also, he also had a remarkable comeback in this edition because uh, he did remind everyone in the quarter final that he had zero in the last uh, match that he played in quizzing with comedians, and then he won the his quarter final with like forty seven points, I think. So uh, give it up for Tanmay Bhat. Really? एक दम बढ़िया सर. मजे में सर. <laughs> आप सब बताइए सब बढ़िया टेंशन टू रिप्लेस मी या या इज इट अलाउड आई वांट टू बी कैन यू शंकर दिस वाज सच अ हुडीनी ओह मैन ऑसम ओके ओह शंकर लाइक शंकर शंकर हैड अल्टीमेट मेक मेड टू वर्क ऑन संडे इवनिंग फेस राइट नाउ ही लाइक कैन आई लीव <laughs> Can I leave? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, welcome, Rohan, Shreemoy, Sonali, and Tanmay to the last semi-final. Uh, all of you have been here, so you know how this works. Let's begin. This first question is for Rohan. Rohan's direct. Although he played the role of X in the original trilogy, albeit in a certain manner, David Prowse had his voice dubbed over by Y because of his strong West Country accent. At Y's request, he was uncredited for Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, as he didn't want people to associate him with a movie which he thought would be a flop. X would go on to become Y's most famous role. Identify X and Y. So basically, David Prowse yeah. played a particular role, but uh, the voice wasn't him. The voice was by someone else because he had a very strong, nice West Country accent. But Y was very skeptical of uh, uh, Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back, so he was like, "Don't associate me in the credit. Don't give me credit. Uh, this might, this movie might bomb." But uh, like over the years, uh, we have all associated him with this famous role. Uh, tell me the actor and the role. See, of course, everybody knows that Amitabh Bachchan and Shen Shah. Um, <laughs> but you know, um, which also, in true Delhi cuisine fashion, you know, Rishte mein, um, <laughs> and. 
So I'm going to also take a swing for the fences and say, is this uh, is this Darth Vader and James Earl Jones? It is J- Darth Vader and James Earl Jones. Uh, Ten points to Rohan. It is Darth Vader, and his voice was given by James Earl Jones. While the actor you, playing him was I someone, am your someone. father. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Next is to Shrimoy. Uh, Shrimoy is slightly verbose, but I think you're used to these questions. You probably heard of those trendy, but ethically highly compromised coffee beans that are passed through the digestive systems of farm cuvettes. The beans are collected from the stool, then washed, dried, and roasted by brewers before being sold for ridiculous sums of money. Well, now it seems that someone in Thailand's Golden Triangle has had a similar idea, but on a much larger scale. <clears throat> Instead of cuvettes. A herd of 20 captive eggs are pooping out coffee beans that are made into coffee. They are calling it Black Dash Coffee and are serving it exclusively in five-star resorts across Asia and the Middle East. As eggs are herbivores, unlike cuvettes, and the fermentation process they use to break down the cellulose in their food brings out the sweet, fruity flavors in the bean and gives the coffee its chocolatey cherry taste. All traces of bitterness vanish. And it has ever been, it has even been described as a sort of tea coffee hybrid due to its softness on the palate. What is X? Okay, read carefully. And uh, there are four years, you have to read again. What is this? In the beach, there are hints in the beach. The idea is to spot those hints. Hmm. I don't know. Black Buck? Uh, no, not Black Buck. Sonali. Uh, one second, I'm going to read it again. Mm-hmm. This is just putting me off coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's that cat poop coffee, right? It's Is it that one? Uh, no, not uh, cats. Uh, Tanmay? A herd of... Mm-hmm. Sheep? Is it black sheep coffee? No. No, not sheep. Uh, Rohan? Word of 20. Is it elephants? It is elephants. 10 points to Rohan. Uh, That's why I said for a much larger scale, herd of elephants and uh, they are herbivores. Uh, Elephants. It's called black Uh, ivory coffee. Okay. uh, These are the images. Ivory coffee. 10 points to Rohan for elephants. Black okay, these these are some images. You know, Rohan, of, this quiz is going to feel like the time when Lord of the Rings took all of the awards. <laughs> really wow, guys. Like two that. questions. <laughs> two questions, really. Two. Two out of trend. 24. Two out of 24, guys. How the fuck did you guess elephants, dude? Yeah. So, so my, heard was the word. Heard you was went the with word. The collective and then, noun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, Golden Triangle. I was like, how many different kinds of animals could you have in that part of yeah. this thing? And weirdly yeah. enough, and don't don't kill me, but um, you know what really finally sealed the deal is um, Sonali. You went on a trip, and you yeah, had Indonesia, on your right? Instagram I know, with I elephant. know. And I oh. sort of then wow. made that connection yeah. also, and oh. went hang on. Nice. Wow. Nice. Thank you. Wow. You nice. know what I thought? Oh, yeah. How many animals poop? <laughs> 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 okay, on that shitty right. note, uh, next up is uh, my other uh, guest was Is it a herd of sheep? What is it? It's a herd of it's sheep. A flock no? of sheep. It's a flock of sheep. Flock, flock of, of sheep. sheep. Fuck. Okay. Ah. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> the the Orion correlation theory. This is uh, Shreemai's direct. The Orion correlation theory or the dash Orion correlation theory is a fringe theory. Okay, it's not a very as a widely accepted, but it's a fringe theory that posits that there is a correlation between the location of the three largest X's and Orion's belt of the constellation Orion, Orion, whatever you pronounce it, Orion, and that this correlation was intended as such by the original builders of the X. The stars of Orion were associated with Osiris, who is the god of rebirth and afterlife. Depending on the version of the theory, additional excess can be included to complete the picture of the Orion constellation and the Dash River can be included to match with the Milky Way. The theory was first published in 1989 and was the subject of a bestseller, The Orion Mystery, 
1994, as well as BBC documentary that the, the X Gateway to the Stars. What are we talking about? Are both the blanks the same, like the river and the dash Orion no. correlation theory? No. Oh, okay. The the dash Orion correlation is almost X. Okay, while the river is completely different than X. Oh, the river okay. is removed just because it it might uh, like it will be very helpful, like too helpful for the answer. I have no idea. I'll pass. Okay, passing to Sonali. I'm so blank. Seems okay. like I studied for a physics paper and turned up at a physics paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> I pass. Okay, passing to Tanmay. Is it Colosseum? <laughs> Not Colosseum. Rohan. The pyramids in the Nile. Yeah, it is the pyramids. Uh, the three giant, the three main pyramids uh, are supposed to play, be placed like this so that they match uh, Ram and uh, God of Rebirth and Afterlife. That was also a hint in some sense because. Pyramids have to lot of to do with mummy, etc. And if you add the Nile River, to it becomes like you can match the. Uh, I wanna, I wanna thank my uh, childhood as a complete fucking UFO and alien nut um, yeah. for this answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. you saw it on Sahil Shah's uh, Twitter Twitter DM one day he sent you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like, hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, next direct will again be Shri Moyes. Shema, uh, in 14th century France, an X. So <coughs> ignore A and huh? it, the, it does not. It, it starts with a vowel. So don't let Anne confuse you. I wrote Anne because X ka sound yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, X was a person who worked on farms. Since these people were poor peasants, the landowners thought of them as untrustworthy and suspicious. Thus, the meaning of X changed gradually to its modern-day definition. Which means a negative character. What word are we looking for? Is it villain? Yeah, that is correct. It is villain. My God. Oh, villain wow. is the word I was looking for. Villain. Villain is correct. Villain was the name of uh, uh, people who used to work on like farms, etc. And then they were considered Crazy. to be untrustworthy. And now, <laughs> over the years, now it's used to refer to a negative character. Some yeah. of the villains you can see on. So you're not a hey. Gushan Grover over yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yet I've never seen a Prem Chopra on a farm ever. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> <laughs> seen him. Okay, 10 points to uh, Shreemoy. Next question to Sonali. Sonali, X are a species of fictional extraterrestrial hum humanoids. <clears throat> they are known for their pointed ears and a peculiar salute. They also strive for pragmatic way of life where everything is governed by logic and reason. And there is little in, little interference by emotion. They are originally from the ep eponymous, which means the planet is also the name is the same. It comes from them. Uh, planet of X. The name of this species is derived from the Roman god of forges, engineers, craftsmen, and fire. What is X? Okay, what happened to the format where you would give clues? <laughs> I'll give clues. <laughs> first, 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 <laughs> when is that coming in? Because I'm waiting for that round. <laughs> we'll do. Uh, okay. Uh, after, after, like no one gets it from the clues initially. What does epi then... epinomous mean? Epi eponymous mean? <laughs> exactly. The name okay. of the people and the name of the planet is the same. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. For example, you say Jerry Seinfeld starred in an ep eponymous sitcom in the 90s. Got it. So his name and the oh. sitcom name is the same. Yeah. Okay. It's. Got it. Not really, but got it. Okay. Um, apes? I don't know. I'm just gonna go with no, that. No, not apes. Uh, Tanme. Uh, <clears throat> is it? Is it Vulcans? Is this a Star Trek reference? Yeah, it is Vulcan. 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 Okay. Vulcan salute. Pointed uh, ear. Okay. Pointed ear was the. Ape. Pointed ears. Yeah. Pointed oh, ears. Yeah. Peculiar salute. Name is the same and reason and logic is what dominates their life. Yeah. Vulcan, Tanmay on the board with 10 points. Rohan, this is your direct. Raghava Yadaviyam by Venkat Adri, written in the 17th century, is an example of Anulom Vilom Kavya. Okay. 
This is an example of an Anulom Vilom Kavya. It showcases the encryption capabilities of Sanskrit and the verbal ingenuities of the poet. Okay. Only 30 shlokas long. It is a short work compared to Hindu uh, epics, right? When you compare it with other Hindu epics, it's a very, very short work. However, it is a very noteworthy work. Now, what you need to tell me is what is an Anulom Vilom Kavya? And what do you think is so special about this particular book or work? Let's look at the hints. Anulom Vilom obviously is, a, is the major hint. Otherwise, it shows encryption capabilities of Sanskrit and verbal ingenuities of the poet. Those are the two important things apart from Anulom Vilom. Uh, the second half is not really important in terms of cracking. <clears throat> But it just shows that something with just 30 shlokas is considered to be so uh, ingenuous. Okay, yeah. I'm just taking a very wild stab at it. Um, mm -hmm. Is the poem like a palindrome? Like, can it be read the same forwards and backwards? Uh, yeah, uh, like, not yeah. really palindrome, but backward, forward. Uh, Backwards, forward is, is, is good same. track. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not um, the same, little different, but so you've already gotten a part, part points. Okay. So okay. something to do with forward, backward, but it's okay. not the same. Uh, can you also um, t add your guess yeah. about what is special about this one or anything else that you want to add? Um, yeah. Uh, so one is, okay, wait. Um, <coughs> what is special about this one is that it's one sentence run on like oh okay no but you you're getting part point let's see if someone okay. can improve that uh Shrimoy, what is your take um you have to read it backwards yeah it has to do something with forward backward that rohan said but i want something more than that now <clears throat> you're passing okay so now yeah So it's the same forward and backwards. That's what was the. That, that's what Rohan said. That's yeah. what Rohan said. He said it's it's a palindrome that is same uh, forward and backward. Palindrome. Uh, I'm yeah. giving him part point for the forward backward funda. Now just I'm love, looking for. Hmm. I just love how Rohan's questions also have trivia in them for me. <laughs> um, pass. I have no idea. Okay, Tanmay. It was sung by Shankar Madhavan in his epic <laughs> Breathless. That was. I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, no clue. I was I was gonna guess if it's a if it's either a palindrome or an amb, like an ambigram or or something like that. Like the first half looks exactly like this. I, I don't know, mm. but I, I he already guessed a palindrome. So uh, okay. does it was it, does it mm. mean yeah, the yeah, same? Sure. Does it mean the same if read backwards as well? Mm, no. Okay. Good guess. Okay, I'll just give a hint. I'm giving Balko points to Rohan for the forward backward funda, but I'll give a hint and then let's see if you can fill fill the things that are missing right now. So it has to do something with forward backward that we have established, but it's not the same thing. Okay, these are two different things. If you read forward and backward, okay, it's not the same thing. The two different things. Now tell me uh, what is so interesting uh, about this book that you read it from one end. It's 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 a particular story or someone's story. If you read it from the back, it is someone else's story. Roshaman. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, is it, is was, it the Ramayan from Ram's perspective if you started from one side and from Ravan's perspective if you started from the other side? Or Okay, good guess, good guess. More part points to you, but I'll come back to you to see if someone okay. gets the exact answer. Srimai? It's something to do with Sita? Uh, no. Sonali? I don't know. Pass. Okay. Tanmay? Are these the words of Shankar Mahadevan in the epic song? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> Ram, again, Rohan guessed Ram and Ravan. I was going to guess. Then I was like, okay, Ram, Sita, try it. Then she moved to Good. I like a, your chain of thought. Um, is it Hanuman? No. Uh, no. Okay. So I have to give all the points to Ron now because no one else added anything 
uh, to what he said. So full ten points to Rohan. Uh, the answer is that it tells the story of Ram went red forwards and Krishna went red backwards. Ah, oh. okay. So yeah, so that is the Anun Anulom Milom uh, Kave something which this can be read both sides. <laughs> no, oh, okay. no, but it is an example. So if you see the first sloka, the next sloka is just the like the reverse. Okay, and both of them will make sense. Wow, that's crazy. And if you play it sideways, you can hear Pink Floyd "Dark Side of the Moon." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you read something sideways? <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ten points to Rohan there uh, on forward, backward, Rama Krishna. Uh, next direct will be to Shreemoy. Shreemoy, we are no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment is what I am thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Gotta make you understand what just happened. I have no clue. Is it something to do with uh, Spider Man? No, Sonali. Is this the translation of Air Jinabi? <laughs> <laughs> It's a serious guess. We don't laugh. Oh really? Oh sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. That was a, that was an anulom vilom. That was an anulom vilom answer. If you look at it from one side, it's a joke. If you look from the other side, it's a serious guess. It was very nicely done. <laughs> uh, um, this is a passage from some novel. This is a passage. Ah, uh, no, novel. not a passage from a novel. Then me. Someone has proposed to someone in a song. Look, the question says what just happened. So I'm telling you what's happened. You can't be like, oh, someone said this in another context. So the question is asked. I'm saying, I'll give you half a point for this. I want at least half of it. I'm saying, I'll give you half a point for this. But yes. on the fun, fun party. Oh, man. Look, KV, we're no strangers to quiz. You know the rules, and so do I. <laughs> Half point is what I'm thinking of. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Are you passing? Yeah. Okay, Rohan. Uh, KV, I'll give you the answer, but first I just want to point out that I think it's really rude that in the middle of your own quiz you would recroll us. I think that's not okay because <laughs> that, that is, is the lyrics of uh, Never Gonna Give You Up. Oh. oh. You just got recrolled. You got recrolled. Uh, what just happened? You got recrolled. You recrolled us. Yeah, uh, yeah. Course. Rohan, do you want to explain what you got recrolled means to our audience? I mean, I know what recrolling uh, is. I have no I idea. Please yeah. explain. For those who don't know, um, in the days of your of the internet, um, there was basically a thing called recrolling where you tell people you were sending them a link or a random video, and it was just this fucking song, and it still happens on Reddit all the time. Yeah. Very frustrating, and it's very cool because randomly Rick Astley shows up on Reddit and also answers recroll questions. As yeah. himself, and it's wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is correct. Cool. Okay, ten yeah, points to Rohan. I only know the chorus, Rohan. I how the fuck who who knows the rest <laughs> of the lyrics, man? People my age. Just <laughs> 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 that. I am officially old enough that I knew this song before it was an ironic meme. Like this was. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes. God. Yes. Oh, oh so I don't know this because of my age, not because yeah. I'm yes. dumb. I think I passed the age where it was a meme also. <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> anyway, not stupid. <laughs> okay, okay. Next direct to Shreemoy. Uh, ah. Shreemoy, uh, talking about a particular person, orders that X should leave a country within 24 hours crop up regularly in his biography. So if you read his biography, you, there are so many instances. Case ko bola, desh nikalo, desh nikalo, and all that. <clears throat> He started the trend in Prussia in 1843 when Tsar Nicholas I asked the government to ban X's newspaper. The Rhenish Zutten, which caused X to become co-editor of a radical left newspaper in Paris and head to France. So he now left Russia, went to France. France in 1845, the French government shut down his new periodical called War Watch, and France also expelled X. He then went to Belgium, but authorities mm-hmm. arrested him in 1848 on allegations that he had spent a third of his inheritance on arming workers. So he fled Belgium also and went to France. Before going to Prussia, and then again launch another doomed uh, newspaper called Rhenish Zeitung. The government suppressed the paper and ordered X to leave Prussia in May 1849. But when he fled for France, <clears throat> the Prussian government also sent him packing. So he sought refuge in London finally with his wife, 
He built a life in London, but basically he died a stateless person. Which person? Who are we talking about? Is it Karl Marx? It is Karl Marx. Karl Marx. That is correct. Karl Marx. It is. Ten <clears throat> points to Sri Mai. <clears throat> Ten points to Sri Mai. Okay, another story. Uh, this time to uh, Sonali. Yeah, yeah. Sonali, you are direct with a circulation of about fifty thousand. This we're talking about a person and something he started. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, but we are going back in time, and with a circulation of about fifty thousand, his magazine, The Student, which he launched in nineteen sixty-six, written for the students by the students, got more popular. Uh, basically, got popular, but wasn't really profitable. Four years later, in nineteen seventy, he started another thing. He started a mail order discount record company that he wished to raise money for the magazine because magazine के लिए पैसा कम पड़ रहा था. So he started a record company. To make up for his lack of financial understanding, he did not really understand finance and all that. And to make things convenient for himself, he had introduced equal pay, where everyone was paid the same. Okay. Mm-hmm. Problem that happened is that in 1971, postal strike happened in UK, and played devil to him because his order was dependent on postal service, mail order business. So he had to think of something new to start. Got him to ideate, and he used this opportunity to open a record store. With headphones, music players, and water pillows to attract student youngsters to come and experience the music and buy it. This store that he opened is the origin of something. Why? Okay. Why is a brand? So who and what's why? Okay. Who's who is this person who first started a magazine called The Student? Uh, wasn't <clears throat> really making money, so he started a mail order disc, uh, dis, mail order discount record company. Uh, that also did not really work. And then because of there was postal strike, so someone near that my life was jagaru. So he started a record store where he was selling headphones, music players, water pillows. And because of this final his final business venture, yahan se a much bigger brand name started. Who is this person and what did he start? I know it was copied here as Planet M, but <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. but it's like I know Strings. I know Carte, but I don't know Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, as it should be. Uh, really, <laughs> think about it. Uh, um. uh, so he started a music label, basically, and you have to guess the music label. Is it that, like that, or who is... something? Something in that zone. Okay. Ah. Mm. Uh. Want to say universal? I don't know universal music. Okay, no, no. Tanmay. Is it Richard Branson and Virgin? Yeah, absolutely correct. Mm. It is Richard Branson so and Virgin. Yeah. Okay, Richard Branson and Virgin Records. That's Richard Branson. He started magazine, etc., etc. Then he started this store called Virgin Records, and then the rest is history. Ten uh, points to Tanmay. Okay, so the first half of the quiz is now over. Uh, good time to check mm. the scores. Uh, Rohan, uh, Rohan got uh, Darth Vader, uh, elephants, pyramids, forward and backward like Ram and Krishna. You got Rick Roll, and uh, that's it, I think. So Rohan is on fifty. Yeah, that's it. 50. That's a lot. Yeah, exactly. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> Rohan, Man, is on fifty. You went full, kuch kuch hota hai aur ki. Shreemoy, <laughs> Shreemoy uh, got a villain and uh, Karl Marx. Oh, <laughs> capitalist uh, <laughs> will love this yeah. sentence. <laughs> wow. Then, and, <laughs> okay, twenty points to Shreemoy. Sonali is yet to start start scoring. Tanmay got Vulcans and uh, 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 Richard Branson Virgin Records. <sighs> So he got two people with uh, pointy ears. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. We are looking for a two-word term. We are looking for a two-word term here. Okay. The history of X Y. So it's a two-word term. Is a surprisingly long and storied one. Historians believe that X Y has been ongoing since at least 2500 BC. By 800 BC, Indian doctors were performing reconstructive Ys. The physicians. Shushruta is considered the father of Indian XY, especially rhinoplasty. He practiced his he practiced his craft around 500 BC. So renowned were Indian methods of rhinoplasty that in the 18th and 19th century, 
western doctors travel to india to study how their doctors like our doctors perform this type of xy what two word term are we looking for it might look like a one of those whatsapp forward things but no it's legit like uh, so that's also a clue in some sense what two word term are we looking for who is direct is it tanmesh okay oh it's mine yeah yeah oh yeah. this is this is plastic surgery yeah beautiful answer yeah. Yeah, oh, like, shit, shit i was waiting wait, for shit. i was i thought it will come and i would like kisi aur ko mil jayega ye this is damn easy yeah. no, no, no. oh shit this rhinoplasty rhinoplasty is a big Rhinoplast. is a is a big yeah. big hint big hint yeah, yeah. <clears throat> plastic surgery it is plastic surgery indians are considered to be pioneers in plastic surgery and shruta Shur is considered to be the father of plastic surgery nose job oh uh, shit sorry yeah no problem i i didn't yes. realize it was my direct No, no problem. Ten points to Tanmay. Uh, next direct will be Sonali. In 2019 Monaco Grand Prix, the Mercedes team painted their Hello device red with a sticker stating "X, we miss you." Instead of their usual silver scheme, like Mercedes has a silver <coughs> scheme when it comes to uh, uh, most of their branding, but they did it red and they said "X, we miss you." Uh, why did they do this? Who were they missing? Tell me, ID X. Who's gonna guess their most famous driver? Mm -hmm. Schumacher. No, not Schumacher. Schumacher uh, wasn't Schumacher. Mercedes. Then he was Mercedes, right? No, Schumacher no. was Ferrari, guys. Yeah. Oh. Schumacher. Why couldn't you ask me the plastic surgery question? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I wouldn't know anything about that? Schumacher. <laughs> um i have no idea um senna not i think senna rohan um is this nikki lauda it uh, is when nikki lauda passed away oh, yeah. the only nikki two lauda. dead drivers oh, yeah. i knew <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is oh, nikki yeah. lauda oh, yeah, nikki yeah. lauda passed away and uh, that's why yep. uh, he, he died in march i think march 2019 yeah. and that's when they did this nikki oh, yeah you. that movie with chris hensworth na no? yeah Yeah, Where I don't remember yeah. Nikki Lauda actor's name, but I remember Chris. Daniel yeah. Brühl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This uh, is the movie where every twenty seconds I was like. Okay. 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 Uh, on that note, uh, <laughs> on that, that note, what a great opening on, gambit! Wow. What yeah. a tremendous on, opening gambit! <laughs> on that note, on that note, uh, can you die of too much sex? That, that's what uh, <laughs> that happened to the rhetorical question. <laughs> that's what happened to the divine. Guys, I just want to say, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you die of too much sex? Uh, that's what happened to the divinely gifted X. According to his 16th century biographer Giorgio Vasari, so Giorgio Vasari wrote about a certain person who is supposed to be very gifted, and he thinks that he died of too much sex. Okay, guitar player. Vasari, uh, <laughs> Vasari recounts in his book. The book is called "The Lives of the Artists." That X, who died aged 37 at the peak of his powers, was brought down by excessive passion. The view of health is medieval; that the body is controlled by humors. health depends on a balance of humors and excess was destabilized too much because of too much action in bed and that is a theory okay and yet vasari goes into detail about this person's emotional life this is what he says he says the young gifted handsome and courtly artist was so enamored of his mistress that she had to be allowed to live with him in the villa farnesia in rome okay when he was painting its frescoes okay so he was like no sex no frescoes Okay, the story of excess sensual relationship with La Forna, Fornarina, that's what Vasari uh, um, like uh, called her, fascinated artists down the centuries. Okay, so much so that he's considered to be an icon of lust among art artists. Which uh, what uh, which person are we talking about? So Tanmay is direct, right? Yeah, it is Tanmay. Oh, direct. it's me. Uh, no idea. Yeah. It's uh, it's um, should guess no. Yeah, yeah, please. Casanova. Oh no, not Casanova. Sonali. I guess Mata Hari, but like that's female, so. Mm-hmm. 
Pass. Okay, passing to Shreemoy. I had written down th- three things, and I was hoping some would get eliminated. Yeah. Um. Michelangelo. Not Michelangelo. Rohan. Just a guess. Is it Don Juan? Like Don Juan de Marzen? Like. No. Don, okay. No? Uh, we'll we'll take one more round with a hint. Uh, the hint is basically in the track that Shimo is thinking. I can imagine the three names that she wrote and she, she guessed Michelangelo. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because it's an icon in uh, the Renaissance period, like an icon in the world of art and like one of the biggest names ever in the world of art. So think on that track and think of the last part where he says uh, he was painting frescoes and uh, uh, he was really gifted and he was supposed to be divinely gifted. So one of the biggest names in Renaissance history, a uh, Renaissance art, art. Is it my turn? Yes, yes, then. Is it Raphael? It is Raphael. Oh. It's not Mac- Michelangelo. It is Raphael. We were running out I... of Ninja Turtles. Yeah, exactly. We exactly. Out of... <laughs> <laughs> we were running out of Ninja Turtles. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Koi, koi bacha nahi hai." I know. That's the only one. It's not it's Lord Leonardo. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not Leonardo. So <laughs> Raphael. Okay. Uh, five points to Tanmay because a hint was needed for this. Next, direct to Sonali. So, Ali Muhammad Hamidullah is remembered for his contribution to drafting of Constitution of Pakistan. He is also remembered for his French translation of Quran. Even though he lived in Paris for a long time, he never took the French citizenship. The reason he did not take is because of his, his strong belief in something. The French classified him as refugee of X, and he remained the last citizen of his erstwhile state, which was annexed. when he and his colleagues had gone to the un where was he from okay Kash- kashmir so, not kashmir good guess uh, shreemai east pakistan not east pakistan good guess rohan is it balochistan not balochistan good guess again uh, tan tan mai as okay uh so okay we'll take one more round with uh, five points so i like the way you guys are thinking it's something to do with india's partition and like uh, indian mm-hmm. subcontinent so think uh, uh, continue thinking on that track don't don't lose that track uh but think about uh like sonali uh, sonali guess i really like because it is a controversial annexation okay that happened so when this was happening some people actually went to the un and said hey what's happening back there is not right but unlike kashmir there is no controversy about uh, where was he from okay like kashmir is still hotly debated this is like properly a part like like, like uh, even baluchistan has some controversy right but this this where mohammad hamidullah was from <coughs> uh, there is no controversy so think think on the, that track he was classified as refugee of x and remained the last citizen of his erstwhile erstwhile state where do you think mohammad hamidullah was from <coughs> sind Not seen. Good track again. Shreemoy. Hyderabad. Hyderabad. It is. It oh. is Hyderabad. Uh, five points to Shreemoy. It is Hyderabad. Hyderabad was annexed by India. Uh, yeah, and now we all like know the story. Shreemoy gets five points for Hyderabad, which means the next direct question will be Rohan's. Commander of the Royal Victorian Order is an honorary position awarded to a person who has done service to the royal family. A book by Mark Logue and Peter Conradi speaks of a certain winner of his honor and his rather unusual service to the sovereign before the Second World War. Name the book which was later later adapted into a movie. Before and during World War also, like if you if you are really concerned about the timelines. So basically, we are talking about an award that is usually okay. uh, awarded uh, to, uh, if, uh, for your service to royal family. Okay. Uh, but this guy uh, was a winner of this honor for a very very unusual service uh, during to the sovereign so like to the uh, to the sovereign of uh, um, of uk then and okay. before world war 2 uh, name the book and the, there is a movie also which has the same name uh, what which movie slash book do you think we are talking about is this this is uh, the king's speech 
Yes, that is correct. Is the the unusual speech. service. The doctor. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. The doctor. The king's speech. <clears throat> the king's speech is correct. Ten points to Rohan. Okay. Uh, from UK, we move to the US. Uh, slightly long, but we are talking about an American president. His greatest feat as an American president and he, uh, the office he held from 1801 to 1809 was the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, Louisiana Purchase is important because uh, it effectively doubled the size of the United States. Okay, so they bought a lot of land from France, which doubled the size of the the then size of the United States. The deal took careful diplomacy as this guy, our man, the American president, knew that the France, sorry, he knew that France controlling the Mississippi River would have huge ramifications on trade movements. Fortunately, Napoleon was in no mood, uh, was in the mood to deal, <clears throat> hoping the sale of 830,000 square miles would help France, uh, would help finance his armed advances in Europe. So basically, Napoleon was like, Mere ko kush karna hai US mein. my focus is in, the, is in Europe. Let me just sell off this land get money and like do what I want to do, which is his advances in Europe. Bonaparte wanted $22 million then, okay, back like more than 200 years back. He settled for 15 million, X was elated. Though some critics did allege that constitution did not allow him for a, for a president to purchase foreign soil, but he did manage to do that. Which uh, great American president are we talking about? Whose director is it? Tanmay, Tanmay. Rowan got King's speech. I'm going to pass. Okay, I have a bad into... guess. I may... No, never mind. Never mind. Pass. Sonali? Uh, first of all, this is a distress sale. Okay. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it... I don't know if it's a distress sale or honestly, oh, after 7 million cash, I got it. Yeah. I think it's a full 22 million, but it's after 7 million cash. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so okay. I'm just going to guess the most Gujarati looking president. Is it Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> no, not Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Shreemai? Is it Thomas Jefferson? It is Thomas Jefferson. Uh, 10 points to Shreemai. It is Thomas Jefferson. He also uh, looks Gujarati. Great, uh, <laughs> great crack. Uh, 10 points to Shreemai. Okay, next direct to uh, Rohan. While living in Nazi occupied Paris during the Second World War, one German officer allegedly asked X upon seeing a photo of Guernica in his apartment. He saw that photo and he said, did you do that? And X responded, no, you did. Because the painting was about the effects of German bombardment on the Spanish town of Guernica. Okay. Who is this guy? Is this Picasso? It is Picasso. That is correct. It's it Picasso. Guernica. One of the most uh, badass uh, moments in Picasso's life. Uh, I just I just love cool. reading this funda of like, did you do that? And he said, no, you did. Like, uh, yeah, oof. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, the, the thing is, one of those sentences is, it's one of those stories that makes me wonder, did he say that actually? Or yeah. Yeah. did this happen? Then did yeah. the German officer leave? And then Picasso sat down and then five minutes <laughs> went, fuck! Yeah. Because it's very unlikely knowing knowing about Nazis to yes, I would say bath karega. If you like, no, you did that, Nazis are not a bath. You haven't done anything. No smart assery will come out. Like, you don't have to be scared. Anybody in a uniform, nobody has that much dumb. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Picasso, and that is the painting, of course. Next direct will be Tanmay. On July 11th, 1969, he released the single Space Oddity. The timing could not have been more perfect because nine days after its release, the BBC ran the song over its coverage to Apollo 11's lunar landing. It would end up being his first big hit in the UK. Which guy whose song Space Oddity is very, very now closely associated with space travel, moon landing, etc, etc, etc. I just love how Rohan is avoiding eye contact and looking down to maintain his face. I was face. literally reading the question. I was literally reading the question at the bottom. <laughs> I know two. I, I have two I, names in my head, but I don't know okay. which one to go for. But I will take an educated guess. Okay. Is it David Bowie? It is David Bowie. David that is Bowie. correct. David Bowie is correct. 10 points to Tanma. <laughs> Uh, David Bowie is correct. I don't know British. this song at all. I just yeah. guessed this British, first British hit 
करके ऑल्सो अभी भी न्यूज में लाइक व्हेन टेस्ला सेंड दैट थिंग दे प्लेड डेविड बॉबी का गाना एंड ऑल दैट तो आता रहता है डेविड बॉबी माय सेकंड गेस वाज लुइस लुइस आर्मस्ट्रांग व्हिच इज लाइक वाइड व्हिच इज लाइक आई एम अज्यूमिंग दैट्स वे ऑफ आई डोंट नो रैंडम इंटरेस्टिंग ट्रिविया अबाउट दिस सॉन्ग यू नो दैट एस्ट्रोनॉट कमांडर हैडफील्ड ऑन द आईएसएस he hmm. did a cover while he was in space of this song um yeah. and he shot it in space and they put it up on the this thing which led to the question of does ip law for cover and royalties <laughs> of this song apply in space? <laughs> because that's not really yeah. a jurisdiction that you consider in these things yeah. um and then apparently they gave him license for a year for free to run that song no problem and yeah. at the end of the year they took it down i think wow T series would have changed this law right respectively <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 just fuck it <laughs> yeah david bowie was done this next director is for sonali uh, sonali i am in the graph shows sales trend of a certain item in america america by america i mean us of a is shown in the chart below have a look and tell me what item sales trend are we showing Just guess anything, get any item. As in twelve and is this face masks? Face masks? No, not face masks. Shreemoy. Something to do with American presidents, like presidential elections. Tales trend. How? Uh, yeah, like what items are we talking about? I've, what sales trend? Okay, Rohan. Is it toilet paper? Not toilet paper. Yeah. Tanmay. I was gonna fucking guess like <sighs> iPhones, but it went goes way back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it okay? Let me guess. Is it condoms? No, not condoms. Uh, first guess. <laughs> okay. We'll again start with Sonali. Uh, the hint that I'd like to give is that. the sale of this item in the us is very very hotly debated okay mm. the sale of this item is a matter of debate in the us guns so it guns that is correct sonali gets it right oh. it's guns and all the spikes <laughs> that i showed were uh, basically uh, shootings okay shooting. so whenever a shooting takes yeah. place uh, yeah so there is sandy hook to aisa bad gaya this covid aa gaya to bahut bad gaya like sab gun kharid kharid ke rakh rahe hain So this all this last time. Goli maar le. 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 Goli Shimoy this is a famous puzzle where the objective is to connect all nine dots using four straight lines without lifting your hand and crossing each dot only once the solution of this puzzle is the origin of which popular phrase this is uh, thinking out of the box yes that is correct it is uh, think outside the box uh, because you can't solve the puzzle without taking your pen or pencil outside these dots and that is where the phrase think outside the box comes from okay that brings us to the end of the quiz uh we had a uh, let me just recap all the it was a jolly really close competition <laughs> uh rohan had 50 after the first half and then he got uh, uh nikki lauda tribute he got king speech and also picasso so rohan ends on 80 points 80 thank you i hate you uh, <laughs> <laughs> sonali sonali got guns at the end so she gets 5 points finally khana khola yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, shreemoy had 20 points uh, she got 5 points for uh, she got 5 points for hyderabad and then think out of the box 10 more points so shreemoy ends on 35 Okay. No. It doesn't matter, but it's okay. <laughs> no, tell me it matters. Tell me. I I am on forty five, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, she's on forty five. She's on forty five. Okay. Because I got Thomas Jefferson. Mark, 
Oh, Thomas, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson, I miss. Reval, yeah, yeah. Reval, Reval. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thomas Jefferson, I miss. I miss Thomas she Jefferson. Will... She was the student who gave her a revival. She was the education is anyways pointless. Yeah. I'll just go back and sit down. Yeah. I'm sorry, not first sorry. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, no, no. Uh, Thomas Jefferson. That matters because now there's a tie for second place. It does not matter because it's not a quarter final. Yeah. But just for statis- statistical purposes. Uh, because Tanmay also uh, had 20 in the first round and then he got... Uh, uh, plastic surgery. Plastic surgery. <laughs> it's so funny to say that. <laughs> Tanmay 20 months when he got plastic surgery. <laughs> then, then got, uh, plastic surgery. Then he got, narrating plot of Khun Bari Mang in short. <laughs> <laughs> then f- 5 points for Raphael and then 10 points for David Bowie. So Tanmay also ends on 45 points. With the joint runner up in that sense. And of course, uh, the winner of this this semi final is Rohan Joshi. Who what a surprise! For the Thank final. you. What a surprise! Oh, yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah. Who would have thought going into Kada. this? So. Rohan yeah. having a hard time being humble right now. <laughs> no, no. I'm just waiting for the now. The, this is peaking. This is the I think the most point that I've done. <laughs> Got so it. now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our, uh, we ha- we know our four finalists. Our four finalists are Kanan Gill, Nihal Parashar, Biswa Kalyan Rath, and Rohan Joshi. Thank you to Srimoy, Sonali, and uh, Tanmay, and all the best to Rohan for the finals. We'll see Thank you, you sir. I will see you all in a bit. Best, all the best, Rohan. Rohan. Thank you, guys.